In this problem, we're told a projectile is fired horizontally from a gun that is 45 meters above flat ground, emerging from the gun with a speed of 250 meters per second. A says, how long does the projectile remain in air? B says, at what horizontal distance from the firing point does it strike the ground? And C says, what is the magnitude of the vertical component of its velocity as it strikes the ground? So I'm going to draw an image of what's going on here. So we have uh, this, right? So it's going to be fired from 45 meters above the ground. So imagine it's like some hill or something. So 45 meters is the length of this. And this is going to be our gun shooting this projectile. And it's going to be traveling like this, right? And we know it's traveling 250 meters per second horizontally. So 250 meters per second. It's going to travel something like this, right? So something like that. And it's going to reach the flat ground. And uh, what we know that, or well, one of the questions asks us what delta x is, so the change in this x position. So I'm just going to label this as delta x. And so now we have it drawn. Let's go ahead and write down our given. So given in the x and y. So keep in mind we're doing two-dimensional, so you want x and y. So we know acceleration in the x direction is always going to be zero unless specified differently. So acceleration is zero meters per second squared. And then in the y direction, we're assuming we're on Earth. So it's going to be minus 9.8 meters per second squared. So that's our accelerations. Uh, delta x, we don't know, right? So this right here, and it's going to be, we're trying to find that in one of the questions. But we do know delta y. So delta y is just the change in the y. So we start here and we end here. So if we start at 45 and we go to zero, the change in y is just going to be our final minus the initial. So it's just going to be minus 45. So keep in mind it's in meters, right? So minus 45 meters. And then the initial velocity in the x direction we do know because it says horizontally, right? So it's going to go 250 meters per second horizontally. So we know horizontally just means in the x direction essentially. So 250 meters per second. And then in the y direction, the initial velocity, unless specified differently, you basically always assume it's zero. So zero meters per second. And then one of the problems wants us to find t, or the time it takes. So we're just going to write t equals question mark, because we don't know it yet. And then the initial velocity in the x direction we don't know, and or not the initial, the final. And the initial, or the final velocity in the y direction we also don't know. So we laid out what we're given. Let's go ahead and solve now. So we're going to start with A. So A tells us to find how long the projectile remains in the air. And so we're solving for time, right? And so if you notice, we have a lot of Y variables, or Y givens. So we're probably going to use Y. And the formula we're going to use is one of those common kinematic ones. It's going to be delta Y equals V sub 0 Y times T plus 1 half A T squared. So we have all these variables, right? We have delta y, we have v sub 0 y, and we have a. And what we can do is solve for t. So all we have to do is plug everything in. So minus 45 is equal to v sub 0 y, which is just 0. And then times t, which we don't know. But keep in mind, t is just going to be a value. It's going to be some positive number. So 0 times any number is 0. So we could just write 0, but I'm just going to ignore it. And then we just have 1 half times a which is minus 9.8 times t squared. So essentially, you just have minus 45 equals minus 4.9 times t squared. If you want to solve for t, divide both sides by minus 4.9. t squared equals minus 45 divided by minus 4.9. If we square both sides, that's going to get rid of the squared. So essentially, it's just going to be t equals this right here. And so if we go ahead and Put that in your calculator, you're going to get 3.03 seconds. So that's going to be the time uh, it remains in the air, so your answer to A. Let's move on to B now. So B, B says, uh, at what horizontal distance from the firing point does it strike the ground? So we're trying to find delta x, essentially, the change in the x position from the beginning to the end. So we're going to use the same exact formula, except for with respect to x. And we're going to plug in time t in order to solve for it. So we know the formula is delta x equals v sub 0 x times t plus 1 half a t squared. And so all we have to do is plug in our values. So we don't know delta x. We know v sub 0 uh, of x is 250 times time, which is 3.03, .03 plus 
plus one half times a, and we know a in the x direction is zero, right? So essentially this side's just gonna become zero, and then we just plugged in t squared. So zero times all this is just zero. So you just write plus zero. So essentially just delta x is gonna be your initial velocity in the x direction times the time. So delta x, if you go ahead and do that, you're gonna get 757.5. And keep in mind, this is measured in meters, right? Because we're using meters here. So 757.5, that's gonna be your answer to B. Now let's do C. So C says, what is the magnitude of the vertical component of its velocity as it strikes the ground? So the formula we're gonna to wanna to use to solve this is V sub Y equals V sub zero Y plus A times T. And so keep in mind, this is just gonna be your final velocity in the Y position is equal to your initial velocity in the, or not the Y position, but in the Y direction equals your initial velocity in the Y direction plus the acceleration times time. So V sub Y is what we're trying to find, right? The final velocity in the Y direction. So it's going to be equal to the initial velocity in the y direction, which is zero, plus the acceleration, which in the y direction is minus 9.8. So it's basically just minus 9.8 times the time. And we know the time is 3.03. .03. So if we solve for that, v sub y is going to be equal to 29.694. Or keep in mind, this is minus, right? So minus 29.694 meters per second. But notice how it's asking for the magnitude. And so when they ask for a magnitude, you know you just basically make your answer positive, right? So they only want like the full number. So it's just gonna be V sub Y equals 29.694 meters per second. And so this right here is gonna be your final answer for C. And hopefully you found this useful.